Hi there, Serial Trader here. Let's do a look here at the uh, major US indices heading to this week's uh, market action. Uh, okay, so since the last video, it looks like we did actually put in the top there at uh, 29.54 on SPX. And I had this little uh, Elliott final channel, channel drawn here uh, to try and illustrate when this final fifth wave move was complete. Well, now we've broken out of that lower uh, channel line, so that's good confirmation. We also broke below that uh, initial support level at that smaller degree fourth wave, which was at 28.60. Uh, so it looks like we may have put in a significant top, and now we're rolling over, and uh, definitely expecting to take out this low here, this uh, previous uh, wave 4 of C low, as it's labeled, and that's at 27.27, and then uh, maybe reassess at that point. I mean, typically you're not just going to go straight down. So once we do a little, uh, and let me just, for the sake of illustrating, say we have a little 1, 2, work in our 3, do a little 4, five, say we take out that low and a little five way move down, definitely would be looking uh, for some sort of corrective bounce up and then that would be a real nice selling opportunity once you have that clean five waves down off the top. So basically the message to me is uh, once we uh, put in some sort of short term bottom here, any corrective looking bounces or rallies this week uh, should be viewed as a potential shorting opportunity. That's what I'm going to be looking to do with the uh, futures. I am still looking, uh, or sorry, I'm still holding those July SPX puts. I certainly don't intend to make any changes to that. Uh, I mean, perhaps if we get down here uh, closer to 2,500 or something, I might uh, take some of those off or roll them down, make some adjustments. Uh, or if it's really just tanking, I might just try and ride it all the way down uh, to look at the March lows, but we'll have to kind of assess as it comes. Uh, now, I had a bunch of these uh, smaller degree fifth wave targets projected, and we actually didn't go any higher after I made that video, but on the uh, futures, if you did the same thing on the ES futures, you can see we actually got really close. Sorry, you can see we actually got really close uh, to some of those upper targets in the overnight session and then of course the futures reverse down as well. Uh, so it was still useful, it just didn't happen in the regular session but if you were watching the futures carefully uh, after I made that most recent video, you'll see that we got right up here close to the upper uh, trend channel line of that Elliott final channel and close to some of these upper uh, fifth wave projections and then we, we reverse sharply. So it's always important to watch the futures and the uh, cash index uh, because sometimes major moves can happen when the market's closed and those just won't be represented on the uh, on the cash chart. Anyway, I'll, I'll uh, clear up clear up some of these levels just to clean up this chart a bit. Certainly looks like a top is in place uh, and that's the assumption I'll be running with. Also, we did just turn over to a new month so you tend to see significant highs or lows form near the beginning of a new month or the end of the uh, existing month. That seems to have happened here, uh, which is a nice little timing nuance that I like to look for. Certainly worked out this time, assuming that the highs are in. And very simply, uh, now that uh, we've had that reversal, you're short against the highs. So if we take out, I mean, your, your trading plan should be, you know, any bounce, you're short against the highs. So if we take out that 29.54 here on SPX, uh, I would remove all bearish positions and I wouldn't necessarily turn bullish, but I'd just kind of sit back and wait to see what happens. Um, so for me, that's the key level now to hold uh, for bearish trades. You don't want to see the highs taken out at this point after we've had such a nice reversal. Uh, that would uh, certainly question the bearish narrative if we don't respect these, these highs that we put in. Okay. Uh, well, that's really all I wanted to go through here on the uh, chart. Basically, it uh, looks like we've got our potential zigzag off the bottom complete. And 
now we're rolling over. So that's a fairly simple message to follow. Uh, okay. Now on the thinkorswim candlestick chart, uh, looking at the daily uh, SPX candlestick chart, uh, we've got a nice gap down. And we basically just opened on a gap down and just uh, went down from there. So no real bounce from that gap down. And we closed well below the daily T line. So that's a significant uh, message. Typically, if you continue to close above the T line, the short term trend is up. Now that we've closed below the uh, daily T line. That is uh, certainly threatening that the short term trend is now down. And you see, we're just coming off the overbought condition on the daily oscillator. Plenty of room to fall until we're anywhere near oversold. So that's good. Uh, we might, you know, we might come down here and get a little bounce off the 20 day or the 50 day simple moving average. That's certainly possible. Or, or do we just splash right through them? We'll have to see. Uh, what I did want to point out here is the weekly candle because it's significant. So on the SPX weekly candle, uh, you can see the previous week we did that potential hanging man reversal candlestick. And now this week we've done uh, an inverted hammer uh, sell signal and also it's technically a bullish or sorry a bearish engulfing candle as well as you can see the real body of this uh, most recent week's candle fully engulfs that prior week's candle and I will note that uh, despite everything seeming so so bullish and ridiculous if you actually look at this on a weekly closing basis okay so we made our weekly high here two weeks ago this was a down week on a closing basis and we made another down week on a closing basis. So basically the, the closing weekly high was put in uh, this candle and these these next two candles were both uh, negative candles on a closing basis. So if you think of it that way, it's important to look at closing price action, not just intra bar. Uh, you know, we've been basically turning down and rolling over for two weeks on a weekly closing basis. And now we do have two uh, fairly significant weekly sell signals Obviously, we really need to start breaking down here to confirm, but uh, it certainly doesn't look bullish having a hanging man and then an inverted hammer slash bearish engulfing. That looks like a fairly powerful sell signal. And I, I often find that the weekly candlesticks, when they give you a signal, they're pretty powerful. Just like over here, we had this weekly bullish engulfing candle. And look, we had a significant rally off of that candle. Now we have a weekly, basically two weekly uh, sell signals in a row. Uh, if they follow through, I mean could be quite powerful, right? Okay, so that's what I want to point that out. We do have the weekly sell signal, pretty significant. Uh, okay, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, same idea, gap down and we've closed below the daily T line. Uh, weekly candle on the Dow, let's have a look. Weekly candle on the Dow looks pretty bearish. So again, potential hanging man candle last week, now this week, inverted hammer. A little bit different than the SPX, doesn't have that engulfing uh, aspect about it, but still an inverted hammer, certainly a bearish candle near the upper end of a trading range. And let's see, did the Dow actually close down for the week? So we closed this week at 23,775. We closed this week at 23,723. So yeah, the Dow has closed down two weeks in a row now. So again, on a weekly closing basis, we've been heading down now for two weeks, even though intra bar, uh, it just seemed like, oh, it's going up forever. It's never going to go back down again. That kind of rhetoric, uh, quite a different message when you look at the weekly candles and certainly on the closing aspect. Uh, okay. That's the Dow NASDAQ. Oh, another thing to point out on the NASDAQ significant here. So on this daily NASDAQ candle chart here, uh, NASDAQ composite, I've had this channel, this trend channel that we, sorry, this trend channel that we've been in. Uh, basically this entire move up. Well, we've now actually broken out of that trend channel, that lower boundary line, and we've closed below that trend channel, also closing below that daily T line. So that's a significant technical breakdown here on the NASDAQ composite, breaking our trend line and closing below that daily T line uh, on a gap down. Definitely significant. NASDAQ has a long ways to fall if we actually get some follow through as it, as it went up more than the other indices relatively. Uh, weekly candle on the NASDAQ, I believe it's significant as well. Let's have a look. And definitely a nice weekly sell candle here on the NASDAQ. Uh, inverted hammer. 
and close down for the week. Okay. Um, that's really what I wanted to go through there. Just pointing out the uh, multiple weekly sell signals and all the indices. Certainly a significant development. Don't want to ignore that. Uh, on the VIX, the VIX has started to turn back up. So we actually did a, again, I don't know how much I believe in candlestick analysis on the VIX, but nonetheless, I'll point out, we did a uh, bullish engulfing candle on the VIX on Thursday, engulfing those two prior candles, real bodies. So engulfing uh, Wednesdays and Tuesdays candles, real bodies on the VIX. And then we had a nice gap up on Friday on the VIX and uh, closed above the daily T line. Uh, so the VIX might be starting to come to life, which is certainly a bearish development for the indices. Thought I'd point that out. VXX, that volatility ETN. We're back above the uh, blue moving average here on VXX. And you can see on a short-term basis, we're starting a little uptrend, breaking above a previous uh, lower high there. Uh, so VXX may, may very well be, uh, be getting its new uptrend, which is certainly, again, bearish for the indices. And the VIX VVIX tool. So it didn't really happen uh, in an ideal way because you didn't have a divergence between VIX and VVIX. They both basically made their their relative lows uh, simultaneously. So you didn't get the VIX VVIX divergence. But what we do have is obviously VIX is breaking above its uh, lower high, lower low pattern as is VVIX. But we have VVIX above the red moving average and we do have SPX now well below the blue moving average. Uh, so not an ideal setup, but you definitely have a sell signal once again on this tool. So that's that's sem definitely something to be uh, to be watchful of. We now have uh, weekly sell candles. We have deterioration on the daily technicals closing below the T line, and we have the uh, VIX VVIX tool here giving us an, another sell signal. Uh, so things definitely look uh, primed to be bearish. Uh, lower prices seem likely and uh, as long as we again as long as we respect the highs of 2954 here on SPX I would view any kind of shorter term bounce or corrective rally as a as a selling opportunity and defining that as your as your get out point 2954 if this is really going to work out we we should not see 2954 again uh, for quite some time okay that's really what I wanted to go through Looks like the uh, futures are down a bit here uh, as they've opened here Sunday evening. So we'll see if that translates into a, another bear session tomorrow uh, during regular hours. Um, could be an interesting week. All right, Serial Trader signing off.